to the book of Genesis, chapter 12, starting with the first verse. Genesis chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Thank God for the reading of his word today. We love that the word is true and we can always rely and lean on it regardless of what's happening in this world. I tell you, there's things that change constantly, especially in this world that we're living in now. Things are different than they were yesterday. And, and because of that, we can be glad that we have stability in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 12, starting with the first verse. And it will be on the board for you to read along. And it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. That's why they call him the father of faith, because God didn't tell him where he was going. He said, drop everything, and I'll show you where you're going. And God made this promise to him. He said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and, your, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Wait, just a second. I know he said, leave your family, get out of your country, and go from your father's house. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Did I read that right? And Lot went with him. So he almost followed all the directions. Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that had been gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the Terebinth tree of Morah. And the Canaanites were, in, or were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Y'all could find your neighbor and tell him, I know you're blessed. I know you're, I know you're blessed. blessed. But you may have a lot to drop. But you may have, have a lot, lot to drop. drop. Say that to one more person. Find one more person. Say, I know you're blessed. I know you're blessed. You're blessed. But you may have a lot to drop. But you may have a lot to drop. One of my most favorite things is when somebody invites me somewhere, whether it be to their house or maybe even, you know, out to eat, and they and I ask them, you know, what do I need to bring? And they tell me, all you need to bring is yourself. Amen. All you need to bring is yourself. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy being treated. <laughs> I like when somebody tells me you can just bring yourself. But, you know, some people get uncomfortable with the fact that they don't have to do anything. Right. Some people think, if I'm coming, I need to make sure that I have something prepared. I need to contribute in some fashion. You can't just give me this and me not contribute anything to it. Mm -hmm. And some people get uncomfortable with that feeling and they feel like they need to bring something regardless. I have a friend every year that has a crawfish boil. And in this crawfish boil, his family gets together and they bring together not only crawfish, but they bring barbecue, and they bring all kinds of sides, all the fixings, they bring the drinks, they bring everything that you need. And so when I ask him, what do you need me to bring to this crawfish bowl? Every year he says, do not bring anything but yourself. But because of those some people who have issues with not bringing anything with them to the party, somebody always brings like a bag of chips or something like that. And you wonder, you done brought this bag of chips to this feast. Mind you, there's sides, there's already meat, there's already crawfish, there's everything that needs to be there. All you had to do was come accept what we had for you. Yet, they feel the need to try to add something in that everybody looks over to begin with. Anybody looking for those Doritos? <laughs> we want the main course, what we came for. And sometimes we need to accept the fact that the blessing is available for us right then and there. That we don't got to bring nothing into it. We see one of the most respected and highly regarded people in the faith, Abraham. At the time, he was Abraham. But you can look at many religions. You can look at Christianity. You can look at Orthodox Judaism. You can look at Muslims. And all of these people 
highly regard Abraham because he was a man of great faith. He really was. He was a man of great faith because he heard the call of God and he responded pretty immediately. God told him to drop everything and go to somewhere where I'm going to tell you. Drop everything you got going on, your family, your household, yeah, the land that you're in right now, and go. And I'll show you this land that is for you. And our scripture starts with God giving Abraham this commission, telling, telling him exactly where he needed to go. And, and Abram did something radical. He heard the call of God, and he responded. He, he, he left the land behind. He left, left his father behind. He, he, he left the family there. But in his incredible faith, he packs up his wife. He packs up his possessions, gets prepared to leave his father's house, and is obedient until the point where it says to leave the family behind. He brought Lot with him. Lot was his nephew. And Abram had a, a, a lot of possessions. He had a beautiful wife. She was, she was middle-aged. She was 60 at the time, but she lived to be 120. So she was just middle-aged at the time. And so she was a beautiful wife that other people even sought after later on in the scripture. And, and he spoke firsthand with God. He got to hear from God mouth to mouth. And, and God said that he was going to be bless Abraham and make him a great nation. He got to experience all that. In fact, God told him, in you, the, all, all the earth will be blessed. In you means what's coming from you will be blessed, meaning Abraham's offspring would bless the entire world. How amazing is that to know? But Abram wanted God's promise to come to pass, but I know it was hard for him to believe. I know it was difficult for him to believe. Why was it that? Because for one, he was already 75 years old at this time. And I don't see too many 75-year-olds walking around having a ton of kids. It was past the age where we even traditionally think people would still be having kids at this time. But he was 75 years old, and he did not have a child yet. So God was telling him, through you, the entire world will be blessed, but you don't have it yet. He didn't see it yet. And to make matters worse, his wife, Sarah, she was barren. That means she couldn't even have kids. So you're telling me this 75-year-old man and this woman who hasn't been able to have children up until this point, 60 years old, did not have any kids, and God said, through you, a blessing was going to occur. And what makes even things more awkward is the fact that Abram, the name itself meant father. So in all of this, God has made this promise. In his name is the, 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 the word father, and he has no heir. He had nobody to pass this on to. The, the promise seemingly would stop right there. He wanted to believe it, but there was no physical manifestation of that promise at the time. And could you imagine being in his position? His name was literally Father. He had no kids. <laughs> father, but he didn't have any children. That's like your name being money, but you constantly broke. <laughs> or maybe, maybe somebody calling you slim, but you weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> Or maybe somebody being named pretty and, well, you know, you know what I'm going to say. So, Abram did what many of us would do at this time. He, he took the opportunity that was right in front of him that seemed to make the most sense. And, and we know that a lot of the times people want to take that easy route when, when, when the other route seems either impossible or improbable. That's why you see so many people taking diet pills and, and doing things like that. Or, or you see people getting involved with these rich quick, get, get rich quick schemes because they, they, they want to take the route that's either seemingly easier than this impossible task or, 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 or find a workaround to the hard work that has to be done. Okay. Yeah. And so you see a lot of people do these things. And so after numerous failures, we can make these bad decisions and in and, and, and our desperation. When we're in these desperate situations, we tend to make these bad decisions and we carry more of the load than we should. Right. Abraham's solution here was to leave his family behind except for Lot. Wow. Leave his family behind except for Lot. And, and, and Lot was his nephew. And the thing about Lot is his father, Haran, had died. So he was uh, his nephew and he didn't have a, a father in his life anymore. And so Abraham figured this was a perfect situation for him. He said, well, his father's dead. I don't have a child. God is saying I'm gonna be blessed. And God is saying this, this is going to come through me, so I can just pick him up. I can just take him with me. And, but the fact is that, that God had a plan in mind to bring the promise through Abraham. 
not not through Haran, and his, uh, through through Lot's father. It was through Abraham. So God wasn't going to default on His promise. God sees your desires. I want y'all to understand that today. That God sees your desires, and He knows where you lack, and He knows what you want, and He's able to do a miracle in spite of what you lack. He doesn't need your help. He, he doesn't need you to, 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 to add your two cents into his blessing. He wants you to be obedient. If you move forward in obedience, then he'll be able to do what he needs to do. So, so in, instead of trying to do things your way and, 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 and living your way and, and following your strategy and, and partially obeying instructions, you may have a lot to drop. Okay. You may have a lot to drop. And, and, and it could be your unbelief. It could be your, your habit. It could be your lifestyles. It, it could be your friends. Come on now. You may have a lot to okay. drop. Okay, right. right. When, when seeking to, to receive the blessings of God, there's some things that we need to remember. First things first is examine your faith in God's promise. Examine your faith in God's promise. Simply put, if you believe God's word is true, then act like it. If you believe that God is going to come through the way that he said he is, then your faith should align with what you're saying. My, my faith in, in his words should direct my actions. The way that I feel that he is going to come through in these things will make me act accordingly. For example, if I, if I, if I have faith that my job is going to pay me and, and send that direct deposit at the end of those two weeks, I may not see the money, no money in my account on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, another week passed by, but then at the end of that Friday... Then the money shows up. I don't get incremental funding in my job. But yet I have faith to believe that they're going to pay me when oh, they say yeah. they're going to pay oh, me. Yeah. So I'm going to keep working. Right. And guess what? I can make my budgets. I can make my preparations. I can allot where money is going to go because I can expect that direct deposit is going to hit my account. Okay. And guess what? I'm not going to HR every day saying, hey, just so you know, next Friday I need my check. <laughs> I'm just giving you a reminder. I don't want you to forget. I don't go to them every day and, and try to make sure that they understand that they have to pay me because that's already a line that from okay. what I started working, okay. it's on the way. Yeah. They don't need my help. We have an agreement. <laughs> I have a promise. I, I, they don't need me to come in and remind them, yet we have more faith in that direct deposit coming in every two weeks than we do in God coming through in the promises that he says. Wow. We, we believe in more in our HR people than we are in the one who created us. There's two kind of promises that God makes. All right. There's two kinds. There's what's called a conditional promise, and there's an unconditional promise. Right. A conditional promise is one like, if my people who are called by their name, by my name, humble themselves and pray, Come on, then man. I will hear the land. It, there's, you know, there, there's a condition to that. There's, there's, if, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, uh -huh. then you'll be safe. That, that is a, there's a condition to that. But what we see happen with Abraham was he received this unconditional promise. See, God said, I will bless you, period. Wow. I will bless you. You, you. you can't mess this up. I will bless you. That's an unconditional promise to him. Abraham didn't have to do anything but operate in faith, believing that God would live up to his end of the bargain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, Abraham, if you do this, okay, I will bless you. He okay. said, Abraham, yeah. I will bless you. Yes. Okay. He didn't have to do anything but move in faith. And so Abraham heard those instructions from God, and, and, and yes, he had the faith to leave his home. And, and yes, he had the faith to leave his father. But where he lacked faith was believing that God had the legacy to bless the world inside of him. Right. He didn't think, I have enough to do it. God, I believe you can carry me through this. I believe that you can give me uh, abundance. I believe that you can bless me in this area, but I don't have enough to complete this mission with what you're giving me. The, the, that lack of faith and, and, and then that desire for Maybe for having a son of his own and, and being able to fulfill this legacy made him bring Lot with him. Even though he left the rest of his family behind, he still brought Lot with him. He had faith enough to know that God would bless him. He had faith enough to know that I can leave all this behind. But the thing that looked impossible, me being 75 and my wife being 60, her being barren and not being able to produce a child up until this point, it made him lack the faith to believe 
that God would fulfill his entire word. Wow. It led to him being disobedient. It was. It was disobedience. But what we have to know today is that if we have the promise of God, regardless of how impossible the situation may look in front of us, regardless of how unlikely things seem to play out before us, that if we would move forward in faith and let our actions align with our beliefs, then God will take care of us 10 times out of 10. But we got to get to the point where we accept that, have faith to know that God says he will meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. That, 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 that he, we've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. But we have to believe, and our faith should align with that. That, that. that those are promises from God that are unconditional. That no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, the Lord will condemn. Yes, yes. Those are unconditional. Mm -hmm. But are you walking in those? Or are you saying, well, those weapons over there look a little bit too much for me. Oh, wow. That slander and gossip and, and the backbiting, that's a little bit too much for me. I, I, and God will deliver me from the smaller things, but those big things, I don't know. You may not be saying that audibly, but are you saying that with your actions? Abraham didn't say, uh, God, I'm going to listen to you in all these areas, but I'm going to still bring Lot with me. He didn't verbalize it, but his actions showed where his faith was. Maybe you should look today how you're handling your finances, how, how you're handling your relationships, how you're handling these different things in your life, and is it in line according to the faith you have in Christ? Or is it looking like something that you think you have total control over that you need to help God with? God sees your desires. He knows what your desires are. He knows that he knew that Abraham wanted an heir. But the Lord says to delight yourself in him, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. We need to start looking at where we get our delight from. Start paying attention to what is changing our countenance. And if it's not the Lord, then we need to redirect and retrain our paths. Second thing that we need to pay attention to is that disobedience leads to unnecessary conflict. Disobedience leads to unnecessary conflict. You see, God's unconditional promise didn't change here. There was no change in God's promise throughout any mistake that Abram ever made. The promise did not change. God knew that Abram wasn't perfect. He knew that he wasn't a perfect man, and, and his mistakes that he made still did not invalidate the promise of God. How wonderful is that, that even in our imperfections, even in the places we mess up, even in the things we can't get right, that God's promise is not invalidated because of a mistake that we made. Abram, Abram wasn't perfect, however, there was a lot more conflict that occurred because of his disobedience. Because of Abram's disobedience, there was more conflict that would have occurred than if he had left Lot behind like he was supposed to. See, Lot and Abraham were both very well off. They both were very rich men. And the thing that's funny about it is that Abram still brought Lot with him even though he was a grown man at that point in time. And so that, there was more conflict between them because of his disobedience. See, Lot and Abram both had flocks and they both had herds and they both had tents and they both had people that watched over the herds and these were a lot of people that were uh, they were responsible for it I said the Bible says that the land couldn't support both of them the land couldn't support all these men on this side and all these men on that side and so it got uncomfortable for those people you see God does this thing where when we are disobedient the things start to get uncomfortable right but things ain't, don't play out the way we like them to play out when we're in willful disobedience to God's will. Things start to get uncomfortable, and, and, and all of a sudden, where the places where you used to go don't feel the same no more. The, the places where you used to spend your money doesn't gratify you the same way anymore. Things get uncomfortable when we're not living in the will of God. And so because of that, a quarrel began to erupt between the herdsmen of Lot and, and the herdsmen of Abel. They began to argue about whose face was what. And they began to get in each other's way. And, and, and they began to fuss and fight. So much to the point that Abram had to step in and approach Lot. But the thing that we should understand here is that Lot shouldn't have been there in the first place. This was a quarrel that happened only because 
of Abram's disobedience from the beginning. Right. Had he been obedient to what God told him, there would not be another herdsman there for them to argue with. If you would have been told the truth from the beginning, if, if you had to begin the right way, if you would have stopped before you got too deep in, this problem never would have occurred. You may be dealing with conflict in your life right now because of your disobedience. Right, right, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. If you would have right. just stopped, instead of diving in that DM, Ooh. you and your significant other wouldn't be going through it right now. If you would have used your resources as God had instructed you, you wouldn't be out asking everybody for money right now. You're dealing with conflicts that you shouldn't be in in the first place that resulted from your initial disobedience. Yes, yes, yes. But if we would just change our mindset yes. from the beginning and say, I'm going to honor God with the decisions that I make. I believe the promises that he has for me will come uh -oh, true. Uh -oh. So even though this isn't inconvenient right now, even though I'm uncomfortable right now, I believe that God is going to come through. So I'm not going to be disobedient to the words that he's given me. I will follow through completely. We can avoid these unnecessary setbacks if we start by listening to God's word from the beginning. Right. There's enough challenges along the way. Even if Abram wouldn't have bought Lot, there was people that occupied the land. There were still other obstacles and obstructions that would get in the way. But why add to your own issues? Why put more on top of what you're already dealing with? And so I ask you today, pay attention and be obedient from the beginning and avoid the unnecessary conflicts that come after that. Okay. Finally today, I want you to be encouraged and know it is not too late to cut ties. Yes. It's Thank not too Lord. late to cut ties. Thank you, Lord. It's not too late to cut it off. After they had quarreled between him and uh, and, and, and the herdsmen of Lot and the, and the herdsmen of Abram had, had quarreled and argued and fought and, and had beef. Finally, Abram came in and he realized that he couldn't proceed with what he had. He could not proceed in the mess that he had made. Because this fight was a direct result of his disobedience. And so he tells them, look Lot, I love you. What I want you to do is look out on this land. Whichever direction you want to go and the land you want to take, you can have that. And I'll go the opposite direction. Wow. You go north, I go south. You go east, I go west. You go high, I go low. Like Michelle Obama said. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we, we, when, when God revealed that to him, he realized that he had to drop all of it. Life. We have to do the same thing in our lives today. We need to distance ourselves from that disobedience. Okay. And I know you made that mistake in the past, but it's not too late to cut that off. You don't have to keep carrying around that thing that is burdening you. You don't have to keep holding on to those things that are pressing you down. It's never too late to distance ourselves from that disobedience. Right. We still have an opportunity. It's never too late to cut off those things that's been holding us back. That's been stopping our progress that's been causing and creating unnecessary conflict within the areas of our life. It's never too late to cut those things off. You see, Abram, he loved Lot like it was his own son. But his mistake was stirring up strife and was bringing and, and taking away the peace of what could have been in that camp. See, God, God gives us the ability to, to turn away from these things. He gives us the opportunity to turn away from the mistakes we made, and it's called repentance. It's just turning away from those areas that we messed up. We can turn away from those things, and, 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 and those things that have been causing us to stumble, those things that have been causing us strife, God can clear our paths and get us back in line to our purpose when we repent. When we say, I no longer want that, I want to let go of that line. I want to turn away from that thing that's been making me stumble. I want to let go of these things. And God can clear our path and direct us to our purpose. Yes. And when Abram separated from Lot, God reminded him of the promise he made. Genesis 13, verse 14, it says, And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated him, 
Notice that God came and spoke to him again. What? When he cut off a lot. God came and spoke to him and set, when he separated from Lot. And says, lift your eyes now. And look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For of the land which you see. I give you and your descendants forever. Even though Abram had been so generous, even though Abram had gotten to a point where he said, I love Lot so much that I'm going to let him choose what land he wants and I'm going to take whatever's left over. Even though he was generous in that manner, God had to remind him that my promise is still that this belongs to you and your descendants. My promise is not defaulted even though you've made faulty decisions. My promise has not changed even though your mistakes are causing quarrels. My promise has not changed for you. And I want you to know today that God's promise is still valid in your life. That he still has best in mind for you. And regardless of any mistake that you may have ever made, that if you would just turn away, that that thing is cut off and forgotten about. That it's no longer going to interfere or impede with the word of God. In fact, it never had a chance to to begin with. So get to a point where you say, I may have gotten off path, I may have gotten off track. Maybe I made a, a mistake that, that interfered with what I perceive to be God's blessings. But today is the day that I'm cutting ties with it. Yes. Today Amen. is the day that I no longer will carry that burden around. Right. Today is the day that I move forward with all faith and confidence and knowing that, that I don't have this burden and, and I know that that, 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 that that yoke is easy and that burden is light. If I give it to God. I just want to encourage you all today. The blessing is still in effect for each and every one of you. But the truth may be that you have a lot to cut off. You have a lot to drop. I don't know what it may be in your life. Could be a relationship. Could be a bad habit. Could be who knows what. But if God is tugging at your heart today and telling you, I want to bless you. I will bless you. I have it in mind for you. See, the blessing of Abraham is, is, is ours as well through Christ Jesus. It wasn't just at Abram and it stopped there. See, Abram became Abraham and we got Isaac and we got Jacob and down through 42 generations we got our Savior. And that Savior who died on a rugged cross you, for you and Thank for me you, and for whoever would believe gave us an opportunity to receive the same blessing as Abraham. So today, let's take full advantage of what God has given us and not allow anything to hold us back from receiving the blessings that God has for us. Would you pray with me today? Lord God, our Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for covering us, even in these times, Lord. We bless your name and ask that you would just lead us and guide us along the path that you have set for us. And let us not carry any extra weight or burdens. Let us not hold on to these things that we are not in line with your will, Father God. And let us move forward in all strength and confidence, believing that your blessings are valid for our lives. We thank you and give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we end, if there's anyone among us today that says, I want access to that blessing. I want access to a father who has his best in mind for me, even if I've slipped up and made a mistake. Today is your day to accept Christ Jesus as your Savior so that you can be a part and an heir in that family. If you're feeling that tugging in your heart right now, as we bow our heads, Wherever you may be right now, if you want to accept Christ Jesus, just slip your hand up in the air. If you're in this room or you're watching from home or wherever you may be right now, just put your hand in the air right now as a sign of agreement. Just say, I want to accept Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And if we would all pray together for the benefit of somebody who might be accepting Christ right now, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. 
I believe you died for my sin. I believe you died for my sin. And were raised on the third day. Was raised on the third day. Come into my heart. I live for you. Amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing right now, and you are now a child of the Most High God. We're so happy that we had you with us today, and we're just praising God for each and every person on this Father's name. Praise God. And also, if there's any.